It was a place that no longer made the headlines. There was little of interest economically about this once prominent trade route along the Lycus River Valley. There were no major temples or industries anymore, no celebrities or high-ranking government officials frequenting its streets. It was about 120 miles east of Ephesus, where all the action by the Aegean Sea was. In Ephesus, churches began popping up and contending with merchants who were looking to make a profit on idols dedicated to their goddess Diana. People saw their lives radically transformed as stories of a man named Jesus began igniting the flames within the people of that community. But in lowly Colossae, the only exciting action was a defeated economy, an earthquake ravaged city, and a cluster of pagan and Jewish worshipers. In spite of its insignificance, though, the Apostle Paul, the follower of the same Jesus who stirred up Ephesus, got the gospel to Colossae. Hi guys, my name is Radon Haskins and I am a campus missionary at Indiana University. Um, I'm a 31 year old married man about to become a father and I am going to be doing this podcast because I love the Bible, I love Jesus, and I just want to make the Bible and Jesus simple, but interesting. How about you, Sam? Yeah, uh, my name is Sam Bodner. I'm a 20-year-old junior at Indiana University in Bloomington studying journalism and religious studies. Uh, I got saved here through our campus ministry, Chi Alpha, in my freshman year, and I've just really had uh, a desire to deeply know God and make Him known through really any means, which is another reason why Radon and I connect so well. Every time we're together, it just it just seems like we're always on these big old uh, biblical yeah. theological rants, and it just it's a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah, and so um, our point here is um, we want to make the Bible alive to you, and also we're going to start a six-part um, series, Bible study, if you will, about the letter to the Colossians, in the Bible, written by Apostle Paul. Uh, It's going to be great. And right now, we're going to jump right into the backdrop of the city, Colossae. And Sam, uh, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, so when Colossae rose uh, in the 5th century BC, it was infectious with traders seeking this precious, dark, red wool cloth called Colossinium. Uh, And this cloth really made Colossae one of the world trade centers of its time. Production brought stability to its people and the economy was really thriving. Um, But there was a rise of a new neighboring city called Laodicea and Laodicea would begin to kind of bring an end to Colossae's success. It challenged Colossae uh, financially and it just garnered more attention from other tradesmen. And then around AD 17, Colossae would be decimated by an earthquake. And although bit by bit the city was placed back together, uh, it was again just reduced to rubble by another earthquake around AD 60, uh, which is about a few years after the Apostle Paul came to bring the gospel or helped to bring the gospel to Colossae. And it's about around the same time also uh, AD 60 when the letter to the Colossians was written. Yeah, and also another note, um, by 400 um, AD, the city no longer existed. Right. It's a harsh time, harsh city. Um, that's going to lead into our, our point that we want to make about Colossae and Jesus and how God um, perceived Colossae. Uh, um, like Sam talked about, uh, Colossae began to be on the decline, and and that's very important. Um, as I grew up uh, in the city of Gary, uh, Gary was a very um, insignificant city, but at one point in time, it was. And what happened was that the steel mill shut down, businesses began to leave, uh, people began to leave looking for more money, uh, looking for a living, uh, and then crime and everything else under the sun uh, kind of moved in. Uh, and not only that, the thing that uh, bothers me sometimes is that there could have been a possibility of churches uh, leaving and pulling out and going to um, safer spaces. Uh, that's bad because If the church, the people of God who have been saved by God don't see the significance of any people group of any city, what hope do we have? Right. And 
And in the same way, we can see God had his eyes on Colossae, even though it was destroyed in 400 AD. We see God actually um, caring enough to actually send the gospel there. And he saw that the people of that city were significant um, to him. And so is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, so when we see throughout uh, the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writing uh, 13 of the books in our New Testament, there's this common theme of the, the mystery of the kingdom of God. And what, the, what that mystery is entailing is the gospel not just being uh, like Jesus. It's not just him being the Jewish Messiah. It's also Jesus being the world's Messiah. Mm -hmm. The gospel is open to not just the Jewish people, but the Gentile believers as well. And in Colossae, there was this mesh like we talked about earlier of Jewish and pagan worshipers. There were uh, conflicts over who's holding the right doctrine, the right theology. There was persecution of the, uh, the Gentile believers trying to figure out, you know, who is this Jesus? Uh, we're seeing all these transformations in Ephesus and Thessalonica and the churches of Galatia. And they're trying to have this transformation in Colossae. And at the same time, they're encountering these roadblocks with all these other different doctrines popping up. Yes. And we can see from that is that God significantly had his significance and the significant eye, if you will, upon Colossae. Because had it not been for the letter to the Colossians, we would not have the fighting for the divinity of Jesus Christ. This letter is one of the defining um, jewels, if you will, of the New Testament that says Jesus is not just Messiah. He's not just a uh, man. He's not just a good teacher, but he is God in the flesh living out the will of God to show the world that he is the king of kings and Lord of lords. Um, and that is very significant for us because... As we move forward as small group leaders, as pastors, wherever we're serving, no person, no people group, no city, no county is out of the sight of God. And if God has that same heart, how much more should we as the church have that same heart towards our next door neighbor or that family member who gets on our nerves um, and that God did not give up um, on his city, even till it was destroyed. God did not stop pursuing the people in this city. And so that's what one of the things that we wanna leave you with today is that even though the people around you may seem significant in your eyesight, God cares for each and every one of them. And because he cares for each and every one of them, it is our duty, our job, our privilege, if you will, to partner with Jesus in pursuing those uh, students. And so that's what we wanted to uh, leave you with. Not just those students, but people in general. Um, we just wanted to leave you with that nugget about uh, Colossae. And we're looking forward to uh, sharing with you next week about the letter to the Colossians.